Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On Your Other Side, Leadership After Transition. Hey, today is a very, very special day, and it's not because of the guest, but the guest is great too, don't get me wrong, and, I, and, and you'll see in a moment why I say he's great. Uh, today is the first time ever that I've brought a non-veteran person on my show. When I first started, I said veterans help veterans, and you know, we kind of get wrapped up in that, in that mindset of us first them. It's never a great thing, right? It, it actually, you find that we need them and they need us and it's a great thing. And if we work together, it's, it's un, unbelievable what we can, we can accomplish. But this guest today uh, is Vincent Jackson, former NFL player. All that's great. But the reason why I brought him on is because he was the 2017 South Tampa Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year. He was the 2015 USAA Na uh, National Salute to Service Award winner for this Jackson in Action uh, 83 Foundation, which after we talk for a little bit, I'm going to give you a brief little story about me and him and how, how he actually impacted my life in a significant manner. So without further ado, I know you don't want to hear from me because you always hear me rambling on. I'm going to bring on Vincent Jackson. Vincent, welcome to the show. What's up, Jeff, buddy? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Now that you're here, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm really looking forward to the, the insight you, you offer to, our, uh, to our, our, our crowd that comes and checks me out every so often, right? So I appreciate it, man. You know what? You gave me a heads up. I know we've been linked for a few years now, and uh, you know I've been trying to catch your podcast whenever I can in, in your live uh, shows. Man, you're doing a great job. So I want to say first, thank you for having me. It's an honor to, uh, to be a part of what you're working on and, and the efforts you're making in our community. So thank you for your efforts. Oh, it's awesome. I'm, I'm trying to reach you. See, I need, I need people like you in my life because as you're up here, it gives me something to strive for. So I'm going to keep keep churning because hey, we're all hustling, awesome, man. We're all churning. Chur <laughs> you know how it goes. That's that's what's up. So I want to start right right away and just get into the into the uh, into some questions. So you were raised as a military child. Both both parents serving in the military. Your father retiring after 21 years. I kind of want to understand uh, what what does that have to do with your upbringing? Have to do with where you are now and what you're doing for the military community. Sure, sure. So um, obviously, you know, through my entire life, you know, since I was young, I can remember, you know, being about six, seven years old. Uh, philanthropy has been a big part of my life. You know, my dad was very philanthropic, very engaged in the community, always, you know, instilled in me the, the importance of giving back and, and to help those less fortunate. So we used to go out and, you know, do charity, uh, you know, fundraisers, uh, you know, 5K runs that raise money for, for those less fortunate, highway cleanups started doing that stuff when I was just a kid. And um, as I got older, you know, there was something that I just naturally, you know, gravitated towards. So, you know, in high school, you got to do your community service hours as you're applying for colleges, things like that. You get into colleges, you join some clubs, you know, that give back to the local community. And then as a professional, you know, obviously you have a great platform as a professional athlete. Um, I, I got to put my hands on a lot of different efforts, you know, from Salvation Army, feeding the homeless, boys and girls clubs, you know, mentoring young kids pediatric cancer, whatever it was. You know, I was very, very active as a player, and um, I thought that was important. It was just part of what the, the time that I had and the um, ability that I had to impact those lives. I wanted to make sure that I engaged with those folks. But when it came to deciding to, you know, really hone in on what was going to be my foundation, I wanted to make sure that it was something that was near and dear to my heart, something that I knew that was hands-on, that I experienced, that I knew that I could relate to those that I was, um, you know, working with. And Again, I still work with all those other ones I spoke of before. You know, there's a very important things that happen throughout our community all the time. But when I was going to put my name on something and, and really go out there and create a 501c3, go through the whole business application part of the process and, and really put a stamp on it, I wanted to make sure it was something that I knew was through and through that I could relate to and that I knew I could make an impact very quickly. And that was supporting military families. Like you said, my dad served 21 years. My mom served about, I think, three or four years before um, – she got out of the military, but thank God she was in for a little bit. That's where they met overseas in Germany. And right. that's where your boy came from. Uh, <laughs> so it was just something where I said, you know what? I got to Tampa 2012 as a Buccaneer free agent and McDill Air Force Base right here in our backyard, man. Couldn't have been more the stars aligning. You know what I mean? I just, I was in San Diego with the Chargers, had a great time there. It is a very military, you know, focused community, but there's something, just a different vibe that I, that I, attracted me you know to mcdill and got me engaged with them very quickly so i knew right away i said you know what it's time i feel like i'm mature enough i feel like i have the right resources around me you know it takes a team it's not just me i had to have the right resources and people around me and i, I found that when i got to tampa and so i started the jackson and action 83 foundation 2012 um immediately got to work you know working with families specifically the spouses and the kids because i feel like it's a little niche, you know what I mean? There's a lot of great efforts and foundations, nonprofits 
that focus on that military active duty men and women, which we support as well. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I feel like that sometimes the family aspect, that structure of what's happening to the spouses, what's happening to the kids, um, when they're having to get you know a deployed parent or a deployed spouse, when they're having to move from base to base every two to three years. Well, how is that affecting the kids? You know, how is that affecting the spouse? You know, they can't hold down a job or get tenure. So those are things I think, you know, statistics that are out there, but a lot of people don't really look at because, you know, there's such bigger, very, very well-deserved nonprofits that focus on these active duty men and women and, and, and the, the sacrifice that they're making. Yep, yep. But let's think about that family structure as well. So that's where we found our niche, man. And it has been a true blessing to be so well received by this base here, such an iconic base in our national chemistry of military environment. And, um, you know, we're just continuing to learn and grow, man. We're servants. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So before I move on to, to the next question, I wanted to share a story with you. Um, you. You know the story, but I want to share it with the crowd, right? So a few years back, it was actually your first ever uh, baby shower, uh, veterans baby showers for the, the spouses, right? Mothers or well, whoever, whoever was having a baby that was a veteran or in, in active duty, excuse me. About a week before, uh, someone fell out. There was 50, I think 50. Uh, uh, yeah, right. yeah, and and Cindy Gerke, and I know you know Cindy. Miss Cindy is is awesome. I love her to death. She's one of my best friends in the world. But she came to me. My wife was pregnant, and she said, "Hey, there's a ticket, and I and I want to know if you wanted to go." I wasn't too aware of what it was. I mean, I, I can only imagine baby shower, and I was like, "Okay, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna go hang out and have, go to a baby shower." Right. At the time, I was an E8, a master sergeant in the army, so I was, I was the old guy in the room, senior. I had two kids prior, so I, I understood the the depths of uh, or what you have to go through to buy stuff and have a baby, all, all that stuff. It was very frustrating when I was a kid, but as I got older, I was a little bit more prepared. But I'll tell you, and this is, you know, don't, don't let anybody take any, anything and start throwing punches at me, but I got a little emotional when I was in there because as, as I mean, there's like $2,500 worth of, of stuff that was given by your foundation to all these young families that are having their first kids that, that really had no earthly idea what they were about to get into. And I don't think they even really, I mean, I think they appreciated what you were doing, but I don't think they understood at that time. Now you go back, ask them now what they feel. And, and I tell you, for me, I was looking at all these people with these smiles and, and what you brought to them was an amazing, amazing thing. So right now I'm just going to, I'm going to pledge to you. I'm not going to give you, so don't ask me for a check, but I'm going to pledge, right? No, I'm going to I'm, I'm pledge $2,500 to the Jackson in Action 83 Foundation oh, wow. from from my company, which is Change Your Forecast, but that's going to be given to you uh, to, to specifically support that organization, which I will do from this year forward. So hopefully uh, we can work out something. I'll be a sponsor, but I, I love it and, and I love what you're doing. So thank you. That is that is Merry Christmas to me and our foundation. Thank you so much. And you hit it on head because that was our first year. I remember that year very well. It's it's a it's a very vivid memory for me. And every one of these military moms baby showers is. I think it's one of the most emotional events that we do. Uh, it's a very impactful program. You're talking about, like you said, a lot of young NCOs that don't make a ton of money. You know, maybe they don't have a, a, a working spouse, and so that, you know, baby carriage, that crib, that car seat. I mean, these are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars at times that you know, new parents don't know that that's coming and how hard that is. Especially yeah. with possibly most of those parents, those couples we select. We try to find one that either been deployed or about to get deployed. They're about to be separated at one of the most crucial, impactful times of their life as a parent and a couple. So um, it, it's emotional, man. It's a great time. I'm so, I'm so glad that you, you know, embraced that event. And, and uh, you know, it was really laid a platform in a, for us to move forward and continue to do it every year. It's gotten stronger and better. And it's just amazing. Oh, it's amazing. I, I wish I would have went last year when I had another one because like every time you have a baby, <laughs> have a baby it's one of those things <laughs> on a schedule. Well, stop the schedule, Vincent. <laughs> stop the schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So so moving on. In, in the military, we talk a lot about transition and we start we start to I mean we have there's so many programs involved in the transition process and it's great. I mean it's it's needed, right? And, and we can go back to statistics about unemployment, you know, uh, uh, housing, like lack of housing, homelessness, and a lot of things that veterans they they relate to the transition process. Well you we forget to think that there's civilian folks that transition as well all the time. And I think you might've went through a transition at one point, because at one point you were 83 with the Buccaneers and now you are not. And, and, and so I kind of want to you know, talk about the mental preparation it took you as you were getting ready to end your career and make that decision to, to leave that behind and move forward in life and doing something else. Tell me what that, 
what, what was what had to be put into that decision as, to, to take that leap to be an entrepreneur and, and, and all the good things that you're actually doing? Sure. Um, well, you know what? Like you said, it's in every industry. It's in every walk of life. You know, I'm not, you know, indifferent from it. You know, I had to deal with the same challenges that uh, military folks or any other, you know, you know, professional athlete or, you know, uh, business person, you know, goes into. Things happen in life. You know, we're all going to be throwing curveballs and different things. But for me, it was just it was one of those plans where, you know, I always had a vision. You know, I, I really believed in what was going to be the next stage for me in my life. You know, I love football. Don't get me wrong. 12 years. So blessed to not have any major you know, injuries. You know, nothing crazy happened to me playing uh, for two fantastic cities and organizations. But I knew that wasn't going to be my entire life. You know, I never wanted to just be a football player known as a football player my entire life. I had other aspirations and other passions and goals and challenges that I, that I wanted to uh, engage with. So I actually started pretty early on in my career. I was fortunate enough to have some educated veterans around me on my, my team early on in San Diego that I could pick their brain and talk about things they did outside of football. You know, what did they invest in or what did they spend their time in in their off seasons? And um, what I did was I took information. I just became a sponge. You know, I really just started thinking about like, look, am I going to focus my time 100% on football when I'm playing? Absolutely. I mean, it's a very competitive business, a very tough business. I mean, guys are coming and going, getting cut every week. There's yeah. guys in your locker that are here one day, gone the next week. So a lot of people see the glitz and glamour of Sports Center, and they see, oh man, these kids, you guys make millions of dollars, and they'll they'll be set for the rest of their life at 25 years old. It's just not the case. It's not reality, man. A lot of these guys, Con probably has out of all the major sports, um, one of the weakest contracts as far as longevity and, and, and the ability. If you if you get hurt or something happens to you uh, for having financial security so it's a tough business and they're always looking to replace you so i i understood that as a young man and i said you know what it is what it is i'm gonna have fun with it i love the game i want to enjoy the sport i want to play it as long as i can but at the end of the day it's not going to define me so i started play, placing seeds I, I call it planting seeds with you know other things that you know could be interest to me and i studied business in college so i went out and i got around some very successful individuals in the community I used the platform I had, whether it was an attorney, a doctor, a restaurateur, um, you know, real estate developer, and I spent time with these guys. And so that's what I would you know, embark and encourage to military veterans or military active duty folks that are thinking about getting out in the next four years, two years, six years, start planning. You know what I mean? Start planning those seeds now. What are you interested in? What are the things that you think that you can transition into? They're going to, one, you're going to enjoy. That's the most important thing in life, man. Enjoy what you're doing. And two, you know, what's something that is really going to, you know, get you engaged? It's something that you have a skill set for that you can apply yourself and provide for your family. So I found out early on after touching all these different ancillary businesses and spending time in people's offices in my off season, um, and then going back and playing football all hard for seven months, I, I went right back to it and said, you know, I think development, you know, real estate and development. I love building. I love helping communities. I love helping people fulfill their dreams of, of their home ownership and uh, investment and finding ways to provide ancillary income for their families. And so um, once I knew that that was going to be my calling, I started, you know, educating myself, going to some extra educational classes that were offered by the NFL while I was still playing. It basically was free to me. And I hate to say this, and there's a lot of athletes out there watching this, maybe not, I don't know, but there's a lot of resources that we are given, you know, with this privilege to play that you have access to that guys just won't take advantage of. And I don't understand why, but it's very important, you know, as a, as a veteran guy, as I got older in my career, I really try to reach out to the young players and say, guys, you're off season. I know you want to get away, go have fun, go spend time with your friends and family, but please make sure you spend a little time on yourself and in your future. Go out there, use some of these ancillary courses that these businesses want to give you because they want to be around you. You've got a great platform and a great following. You're a professional athlete, so they're going to open these doors for you. Use it for your own benefit. I hate yeah. to say that, but be a little selfish. Use that platform to prepare for your own future. And um, that's what I did. And so when the transition came for me, um, I knew it was coming. You know, I had actually got a little nicked up my last couple of years and I got to put on IR. And I, you know, I, it was kind of a slow year, just like, man, I'm not really beat up. I don't feel bad. I never had any major surgeries, but I just couldn't play. You know, the team had to make a decision. I had to go on IR. So I was ready, man. Mentally, you know, I was ready to get fully engage in my company, which I had started years before, had been active in the company uh, since 2012. And when 2017 rolled around, I said, you know what, guys, 12 years, it's been a great run. I'm ready to go out there for this next challenge. And uh, that's what I did. And fortunately, when you have some things set up like that, kind 
kind of waiting on you. You know, I had you know a couple of restaurants, you know, the real estate thing going. Um, it was a lot easier for me to actually take a little bit of a break when I finished football and then really step right into the office and get going. So uh, if you have something planned, that's the best security blanket you're going to have to make that transition go a little bit smoother for you. No doubt. No doubt. And it's interesting. So just so you know, I do a little homework. Like not, I'm not like a studious person, but when I'm going to have a guest, I kind of look through some stuff. And I, and I, you had an interview with USF and something really hit, hit, hit me like right upside the head, something in which I believed in, not something in which I've said. You had talked about the retirement terminology. I mean, I retired after 20 years in the Army. A lot of people are retiring after a certain amount of yeah. time. Uh, and and you had, yeah, right. And you said uh, you don't you don't believe in that retirement terminology because your your real career, your new career, it's just beginning. So and that's a big thing to think about, because a lot of folks, when you start putting the end date on something, it seems as though, OK, now now what I'm finished. And, and, and a lot of people get it's a mental thing, an emotional thing. And a lot of those things yeah. exist. Right. So I liked when I read it, I was like, that's something I'm going to keep it, like right here in, in front of me because it's true. I mean, I started a whole new chapter. And I know I'm at the very beginning, so it's climbing up that, that ladder again. And it's, it's exciting, man. It really is. And hey, you want that challenge, to be honest with you, man. It's, it's, it's like, you know, every ending, you know, or every closed door, whatever happens to you, like, it's, it's another one coming, right? Something else begins. You've got to start from the ground up. That's okay, man. you got to embrace those challenges. That's what life's about. That's what our journey's about. Um, you know, whether, you know, you just want to go out there and do philanthropic work, whatever it is, man. I mean. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be things where, you know, economic or national or weather, or whatever it is, those things are just going to change each and every day. We're going to have to face that, get up in the morning, and you got to make that decision, like you said at the beginning of the show. Um, how are you going to approach that, man? How are you going to treat that day? Well said, and that's it. So you're based on your experience in retirement, and, and you alluded to it a little bit, is kind of have a plan of uh, action. I just kind of, as, as, you, as you think of, what, what kind of advice would you give someone? Is that what it would be is to have a plan of action uh, when you're getting ready to make that transition, no matter whether it's retirement or separation? Because, you know, a lot of the struggles come, well, there's a lot of struggles that come from people that, that serve 25, 30 years as well. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen that we don't really talk about a lot, but we've lost some folks for suicide because those, 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 it became who they were and they didn't know how to act outside. There are a lot of, a lot of depression that goes along with it, but a lot of the younger folks get out um, and really, they don't have a plan. They just know they don't want to be here anymore. You know, the, the, the life isn't for them and that's okay. But what, what, what would be that advice that you would give them if they were, if they were getting out? You know, it, you know, a lot of people, even, even if you find something that you're doing, it's always still always going to be about planning. I mean, enjoy the day, enjoy the present. I absolutely am a big believer in that each and every moment is precious. I, I get it. Um, but you always want to forecast. There's, there's such a value to sitting down, to scheduling out your day, your week, your month, and your year. And even if you're, if you're skilled enough to do it, which is very hard to do, you know, even some of the most you know, successful executives I talk to, it takes a lot of time for them to plan out, you know, a two to three year plan, you know, to execute that and actually fulfill the milestones that it takes to, uh, to reach that goal. So whatever it is, man, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no bar here. There's no challenge or there's no expectation of failure or success. It's about just what fits you. You know what I mean? What can you do that fits your day, fits your family, fits those people around you that you can impact? Because at the end of the day, man, that's what we're all doing. We're working to make an impact in our family, ourselves, those around us, our community. Um, and that's what you want to do. So don't set your bar. Don't have some aspirations of some people you see on TV and this media gets things kind of like kind of fogged up a little bit about what you're supposed to be or how you're supposed to look. Like all that stuff is very, very superficial. I think it's about being genuine to yourself finding things that really attract, you know, your soul, your spirit, um, and, and that you want to be, you know, you know, hands on with, you know, and so don't, don't worry about it. Sometimes it's not about making a bunch of money or having some career that has some dollar sign at the end. It's not about that. I mean, you want to go out there, you want to make an impact. You want to enjoy your time. I promise you, man, life is short. It goes too fast. So let's just enjoy it. And um, if there's any specific goals I can say career wise is, you know, make sure you're enjoying what you're doing, you know, and make sure that, those around you appreciate you. And if there's ways that you feel that you, you've reached a goal, where's your next challenge? That's the thing. It's like I, I try not to set a, a ceiling for myself or a floor for myself because I believe in always growing. I believe in education, learning, learning, reading, reading, doing more, getting around somebody new. I feel like, you know, I just I meet people and network and I expose myself. And I used to be a really shy kid. Like literally it was funny. Like 
I was that kid who stood behind his mom's leg. Like I did not want to socialize. I hated going to kids' birthday parties and stuff. And then when I got to, I guess, high school age, when I had to, you know, expose myself a little more, started doing more interviews and things and had to transition into college where I found success, you know, I got out of that shell. And I was thankful to have a family that supported me. My dad worked with me a lot about, you know, how to speak and how to, you know, engage with people and get out of that comfort zone. And sometimes it's, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you got to be un- you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable, which I had to work on. Um, and it's still a work in progress for me. I, I, I don't love public speaking. People can ask me all the time, come, hey, come to my event. I got 500 people. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. But if you put me around, you know, 350 kids or 1,000 kids and I get to run around and play in the, in the grass, I'm all about it. So it's just about continuing to challenge ourselves, learn about yourself, push yourself, and, um, you know, just finding that happy zone. That's awesome, man. I, I appreciate that. And, and I liken some of what you were saying to the things in which I speak about, uh, especially to, I don't want to say young folks, anybody that really wants to listen to me, I, I'll work it out. Uh, Daniel Foss said, uh, the hardest part of impact is when plans change on you. That's uh, There's mm-hmm. some comments coming that uh, I'll, I'll read some here in a minute just to let you know that people are giving you shout outs and stuff. But okay. I, I, I teach, I, I Back in the military, we had we had maps, right? And then there there were you know you did land navigation, you plotted points, and your place was over here. And, and the thing is, for quickest uh, line to, or quickest uh, way to a point is through a straight line, right? That's what they say. But the problem is, a straight line isn't always easy. It's not always possible. I mean, sometimes there's large bodies of water. But because you take a right or you take a left and you go around, doesn't mean your goal has changed. And that, and that's the thing is that you know in life we have you know kids, we have marriages, we have loss, we have, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that piles on us. And, and if we allow that to, to dictate our future and, and we, and we lose sight of where we're going, that, that I could understand that being an issue, right? But if you maintain those goals and you maintain those points, yes, you're going to take a right. And you might not achieve it in the manner and the time that you had wanted to, but if you keep that in, in your forefront, work through what you have to work through, you can achieve it. You can get there. It's just, you can't lose sight of it. So I got a, uh, your your point of making goals and setting uh, you know ec- uh, reasonable goals, things that are not yeah. okay keeping them, and that's that's huge, man. It's a great great point. I appreciate it's a big it. deal, man. I promise you, man. It's those small things of just you know I, I work on it with my my oldest kid right now, and like we talk about in the morning, how do you start your day? You make your bed. Why do you make your bed? Because it's one accomplishment, right? It's your first accomplishment of the day. You get up, you make your bed, and you get dressed, and guess what? It inspires you to do the next goal, and then to finish the next goal, and another accomplishment. And it's just momentum, man. It's momentum. Life is about momentum. Um, like you said, you're always going to get that shot, that shot to the gut, or something's going to be a loss, or something's going to happen at work. Those things happen on a daily basis, a weekly basis for me. Um, but I, ha- but I have that goal. What you talk about? I have that vision of, you know, what? Where do I want to be in three years? What do I want to be in five years? What do I want to build for my family, my children? What example do I want to set? So if you keep that, you know, fresh in your brain, and, and spend that five minutes, or take a break at lunchtime, or walk outside and take ten minutes, and just recalculate get those things get those images going again man it's we're such creatures of, of visualization and, and and understanding and and really you know feeling of what we what we can you know be a part of so i really believe in that i talk about that with my employees my staff my partners um you know let's let's, let's be on the same page communication is great um you know and self-communication being self-aware is very very important so um all about it man i think you're on the right track you're sharing the right knowledge man so absolutely support that. No, that's awesome. And it's interesting because like people talk about dreams and dreams happen to you, right? That's something that you can't control when you're dreaming. It's because you're sleeping and it's happening to you. But if you can imagine or visualize or vision, uh, you know, make that, it's something you're doing, you're actively doing it, which, which gives you that little bit of momentum because you can see it, you know, it's something that you can, you've created within your mind now get out there and achieve it. Right. So that's, that's just, that's awesome, man. That's a great, great conversation. All right. Essence of time, because I know you have wonderful things to do here in Tampa, and I don't want to hold you forever. So I want to, I want to, get, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here with the with the question that I ask everybody on the show, no matter what. And it's a it's a you can't make this stuff up type story, like something that that around the military, whether it be through your 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 charity work or when you were with your mom and dad when you were younger, just something which you've seen or, or was part of that normal people. When I say normal people, like the folks outside the military that. We do things that are kind of crazy and, and people just don't believe it. So I kind of want to hear your point of view from your perspective of a, of a situation that might have arose that you couldn't believe it actually happened. Do you, uh, do you so military base, right? Obviously, my military experience as a kid or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. Um, 
I mean, one of the most vivid memories that I have, and this maybe isn't specific about, you know, military involvement, but we lived in Grafenberg, Germany for three years from the ages of seven to 10 for me. And I love my time in Europe. It was absolutely awesome. Um, it's a different pace of life, a lot of culture there, a lot of diversity. So I really enjoyed that time. But what was funny is like, we lived in a, a small village that was off the base. We didn't live in, in, in base housing. Mm -hmm. It was kind of military American family housing, but it was about five miles off the base. So we had to make a commute on base and I went to school on base. And I swear dude, I will never forget the biggest bores that I used to see as we used to go. And I hate to say this kind of sad, but there used to be really, really bad accidents. You know, people hitting these things. I mean, they're, they're like six, 700 pounds. You know what I mean? These things are as high as your hood. But we used to see these boar families. I have these vivid memories of these boar families of like mama, daddy, and like there's eight little, small, little, you know, wild pigs running across the freeway, you know, in the, you know, five o'clock in the morning, we're heading to base or, you know, seven o'clock in, in the evening when we're leaving base and going back to our house. So just one of those military experiences where you say, you know what, I was a young kid and, you know, people sometimes take buses or do, you know, have other experiences on their journeys. Look, I had to get commuted back and forth. My dad was going in early to the office. He had to take me in, get me to school early. And I, you know, had to go to the youth uh, services center after school until he was off, my mom was off. And uh, they would have to take me home. So I spent full days. I'm talking like literally 5 a.m., 7 p.m. That was our military family day. But those trips back and forth on and off base with those wild pigs, those boars, bro. Big <laughs> I, I, could, I could imagine. It was crazy. I loved it. That's awesome, man. So so I got to tell you, a lot of a lot of folks, you know, feel that that five o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. And that, that, again, goes to your heart of what you're doing for the military family because you've experienced it. So it's great to see what you're doing. Hey, Vincent, I don't want to keep you any longer. I do want to say yeah. from from uh, all the people at McDill, from SOCOM, CENTCOM, uh, SOCSEN, JCSE, uh, the wing itself, six, six comm squadron, all those folks that you support all the time. It seems as though you have an event or you're part of an event at McDill, you know, each month, if not more than, and I just appreciate what you're doing for our community, for our families, uh, and, and I will support you. And I, I just thank you for taking your time to come out here and, and hang out with us for a little bit. Thank you, bro. And I got to give a shout out to my folks, man. I'm honorary commander right now for the six support wing, uh, six wing uh, air support uh, family mobility wing. Shout out to my folks, my my commander, Kim Light. She's doing great. She actually got promoted. She's major. She went from major. I think she's going to be uh, promoted here in the near future. It just happened. Um, but awesome right. folks, man. Always on base. Shout out to everybody at McDill. And uh, God bless you guys. Have a great Christmas. Have a great new year. Outstanding. Thank you again, boss. And we shall talk to you soon. I dropped my mouse. Like this is the lack of professionalism on the show. I got to use the mouse to stop it. And it's on the floor. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend like I'm not moving out of the screen. But anyhow, hey, thank you all. Everybody that came in and made some comments. Thank you so much. Uh, my, my nephew uh, wanted to tell you thank you for, for giving time out of your life to reach out and help others. God bless you. Uh, and and, my, and uh, Marshall Harvey was talking about the uh, McDill area and the relationship between the Bucks and McDill loves that. And I think that, I mean, as a matter of fact, I actually took advantage of the Jackson, uh, the, the, your, your end zone seats. One time I took my kids, which yeah, they buddy. loved. It. Yeah, my son, buddy. Time, I think, was maybe eight. I got it. He's got the cheerleaders are there and he's like, <laughs> it, 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 off the shirt. Um, but yeah, and, and Toby Asbeck and my brother David all, all make a mention at, at Saw Major Randolph, which uh, you, you actually met. Uh, short guy, short guy, real stocky, big boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's about cool. to retire here after 31 years, man. At February 1st, it'll be his retirement. Yeah, what a career, awesome guy. But hey, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for taking your time. And, and we'll definitely be in contact. And again, I'm pledging that $2,500, but don't be knocking on my door. It's coming. So. Uh, that's all good. I'll see you in 2019, my friend. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed it, but here on the other side.